everybody, welcome to a Geometry Dash tutorial, the best tutorialist in the community, alright, okay, there's a few people, but I am number one, and today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use all of the triggers in 2.11, or is it 2.13, either, uh, either way you're saying it, I'm going to be explaining how to use all of these, they can be a little bit annoying, but I will show you how I do it anyway. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so let's go ahead and start off with the very most important trigger in the game, which is the color trigger. Now, the color trigger is used for literally everything in your level. If you want it to change colors or if you want to utilize colors. So, I already put down one color trigger, right? And it's set for color one. Now, what color one is, is, well, say I have a color block, right? So, like one of these blue blocks, right? I put it down and I set it to color one, all right? And say I wanted to start it off white, you know, because that's the default color, right? And I say, hey, I want to change the color of it. Well, I go here to my color trigger. Go to edit object and it says select the color. Now, what is useful about some of these triggers is that you can use this little icon right here, the little eye, so it can, you know, help you out with the triggers. Like right here, for example, it says change attributes of the color channel, copy color, inherits the color from another channel, color ID changes the target channel, this trigger controls. Basically, let me just go ahead and just dumb it down for you guys. Alright, so right now, like I said before, that little block that I had already down, that's in group color ID 1. Alright, so all colors in group ID 1 will change to whatever color I choose it to be. So let's choose, um, you know what, since we're Souls Gaming, we're going to use purple, right? A nice bright purple. Boom. So copy color. Basically, all this does, it copies a color from either the same channel or a different channel, for example, channel 2, and it adds the same color it has from that channel into this. Now, we get to the most important part of the color trigger, which is blending. Make sure to use blending because that's what makes the object, like, really, like, glow. So, let's go ahead and just do this real quick. Let's make this all color 1 and get rid of all of that. And, see, right now, it looks a little bit opaque. But let's go ahead and make the background a little dark. And let's go ahead and we're going to reduce the brightness of color 1 as well. So we're going to go make it mm, like about that. Now watch what happens. The colors are now about to blend into each other, which what blending means, all right? So look at that. Look at that. Beautifully blending in. So you get a nice little blue nice little blue color actually. This actually looks really nice right here. It looks really good. And that's basically the color trigger in a nutshell, so let's go ahead and move on to the next trigger, which is another very important trigger, which is the move trigger. Now, the move trigger is actually really simple and really basic to use. Don't get intimidated by this. I will show you how to use it properly, all right? In order to make this spike move, we have to go into this op this uh, b button right here called Edit Group, right? You gotta click on it. Oh, voice crack. Holy crap. All right. And we're just gonna make this in group ID 1. Now, this trigger will only work, along with all the other triggers, will only work with the object with a correlating ID. So, if they don't get the same ID, you ain't gonna get the same ID, you know what I mean? We're gonna have our spike in group ID 1, alright? And we're just gonna click OK, alright? Say, and right, like I said before, I want this to move up, alright? So, let's go ahead and go into the move, alright? So, let's go ahead and edit this. Now, the first thing you want to look for is target group ID, alright? So, basically, you have to match this number with the object that you want to move, alright? So, we're going to move this up to 1, alright? Because our spike is in group ID 1, alright? And we're going to make it move up, alright? So, let me go ahead and explain the move X and move Y, alright? This little grid right here, each block is the equivalent of 10. So, when you move an object up 10, that is the equivalent of moving it up a box, alright? As you can see right here, I'm going to make the Y move up 10, alright? And watch the spike go up. Let's move it. Let's go ahead and move the move trigger in front of it so the spike moves up before we approach it. Boom. Look at that. Alright? Now what easing is, you can basically just play around with this, right? Because there's ease in, ease out. There's a bunch of easing. You can just experiment with this to however you want your level to play out. Usually the most popular ones are ease in, ease out. Like, uh, let's see, right here. 
because it actually has a really nice fade up not really a fade effect but a nice little transition effect for when an object is moving so I'll show you right here it actually looks really smooth when it moves up another popular one is the bounce out alone instead of just bounce in bounce out because bounce in bounce out looks a little rickety like this like that you know like you know like the Bowser's castle type of movement and then there's bounce out alone which I personally use which looks really nice and then there's also back in back out you can experiment with this and if you're looking at this you're probably looking at use target don't nobody look at the use target crap man don't nobody even uses this man it basically if you already have an object in a group and you want it to move it similarly to the one that's already moving but for us for only one of these instead of like X only or Y only that's that's how it moves all right it's it's weird it's hard to explain so I'll probably put it in text right here all right so the next trigger is the stop trigger basically if you put a trigger in a group and you just tell that trigger to hey you stop that all right it will basically stop the trigger trigger from doing whatever it is doing and we're gonna have to put this trigger in a group so a group yes you can put triggers in groups by the way and we're just gonna put this in group ID 2 and we're just gonna put this stop by stop trigger command right here in group 2 and we're gonna make this take like forever to get to 50 so we're just gonna like put that move trigger right there and we're just gonna stop it right there look at that as soon as your player passes that stop trigger, that's when the trigger completely stops. Now the pulse trigger, another very important one, especially for dancemen, alright, is you can basically make any channel pulse. Like you can make the background pulse, the ground pulse, the ground 2 pulse, anything you can make pulse except for your icon, which is sad. You can make the background, like I said before, and make that pulse. Basically what I mean by this is we're going to make the background pulse. So let's go ahead and edit object and we're going to set it to the background, all right? The old in order to get it to the background, you have to click on this little plus icon right here. And if you want a certain color to, to pulse such as color 1 through 5 or whatever, you have to go click through these, all right? But we want the background to pulse and we want it to pulse a nice and bright blue. So let's go ahead and do that. Fade in is basically the color fading in. Hold basically means how long it'll stay. And fade out basically means is how long it'll take to fade out. There you go. See the background pulse. What the alpha trigger does is it makes the opacity, it determines the opacity of an object. So say I want a certain object to be in low opacity, such as, uh, what's a really obvious block? Black block. Because black blocks are easy to notice. Then, like I said before, with all the triggers, it has to be with the same correlating object ID. All right. So go ahead and put this black block in group ID number one. All right. Juan. I'm going to go to the alpha trigger. Eh. I right, go group ID, set it to one, and the fade time is basically how long it will fade to the certain amount of opacity. So your fade time, right, let's have it at uh, like a second, all right. And I want this thing to completely disappear, all right. I'm gonna put that right there. Look at that. So it's fading away, fade away. Look at that, it's fading away. The so toggle trigger, basically what this does, it turns on and off any objects. See right here, the wall's still here. I passed the trigger, now it's gone. It will not kill me. Like, let me turn off, uh, ignore damage. Look at this. It's not a joke. I promise you it's not editing at all. Look at that. It's gone. It's gone. Now, the spawn trigger is probably one of the most annoying ones, and this is where we get into the most or complicated ones, but what the spawn trigger does, it triggers triggers. So, some of you may have noticed, if you have IQ of 2 million, is that some of these, all of these triggers have the spawn triggered. And what I mean by this is that this trigger will not work unless this trigger activates it. On trigger will make this trigger work. So let's go ahead and put this trigger in a group, which is group ID 2, all right? Now we're going to get the spawn trigger right here, edit the object, and we're going to make this group ID match the trigger that we put down earlier. So we're going to make it group 2, because that's the group ID of the trigger, all right? And the delay basically means how long it takes to de de delay it like right here and editor disable what that means it disables it from the editor but it'll work in game all right and spawn triggers can also be spawn triggered well spawn triggers can also be triggered by different triggers and so on and so forth it's basically infinite you can make an infinite trigger if you want to which I will explain in another tutorial I guess with the trigger combinations or whatever but yeah basically let's have it at no delay and we'll have the spawn trigger right here See, right now it's not moving, but with the spawn trigger right here, it moves down. Boom. All right. Rotate trigger is basically how Rob Todd made the fireball tutorial. I will show you how to do it with a couple of blocks, like let's say these three blocks right here. All right. So, 
we're gonna have to put this middle block right here in a group so group ID one also what we're gonna have to do is we have to put these yellow blocks well these yellow orbs in group two all right and you'll see what I mean when you see the rotate trigger now as you can see you have a bunch of crap right here do not panic at all all right this took me a little bit of experimenting when 2.1 came out but I figured it out to the brim all right so here's what it does all right so target our group ID this is the object that's in the center not, not in the center this is the object that you want to rotate which is my orbs all right and those are in group ID too all right my center group is the black block which is in center group one now I can determine what angle right here I want it to rotate. So say I want it to rotate 45 degrees, all right? And about 0 0.5, 0 0.1 one half of a second, right? Look what happens when I put it right here. If you measure it, those orbs are at 45 degrees. You can also make it rotate three, 360 degrees. It was basically a full circle, like one, two, how many times you want. It can even be infinite. I'm just kidding. It can't really be infinite, but hey, you want to see a helicopter? boom that rotated 999 times the rest of them are that basically spawn triggers but I will show you how to use the ones that are not spawn triggers such as the shake now what the shake does is basically like a trigger meme right it's where the shake it shakes the whole entire screen you can't shake a certain object that takes the move trigger to do that but in order to shake the entire screen you have to use the shake trigger the, sh the shake trigger what the setup you have to set up the shake trigger all right the strength is basically how strong you want your shake to be. The interval is basically uh, in what intervals are the waves of the, the rotation, not rotation, the wave is, not the wave, the, 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 the frequency of the earthquake. You know what the, the, the ground things that measure earthquakes, I don't know what they're called, but that's what that is, all right? And the duration, like I said before, and all the triggers is basically how long it'll last. So let's go ahead and see how this looks in game. Let's go ahead and put a spike so we can really experience this. Okay, well, that's actually not that strong of a. Let's let's fix let's fix that let's fix that. There we go. That's what I like to see. Yeah, that's how you. Ba that's basically the shake trigger. Animate trigger. All right. Now there are certain monsters in the game that you can animate, such as this month this giant drago chicken thing right here, and the bat. All right. Basically, this is the part where you have to really experiment a little bit. But if you want to know what uh, the things do, normally what the dragon does on its own, it just uh, bites and the bat just flies. Like, I'll show you right here. Like that. They just do that on default. But if you want them to do a certain action, that's where the anime, an anime, the anime trigger comes in. So let's go ahead and put this dragon in group one. And we're gonna animate them so if we go to this little setup right here which I go to all the time if I want to animate a monster I just click on the eye and this is called the big beast all right zero is basically the bite which is basically the default of it now if we keep testing this this is attack one so let's put it in group ID one now his mouth stays open yeah that's where his mouth stays open the whole entire time and group ID 2 is where his attack ends and this is where he just stops biting and the bat it can just stay idle or idle 2 idle 3 you can basically experiment with these and just test out what the other animals do it's just a lot and you can get really creative with it and you sadly we can't animate these guys at all actually that's those are hearts we can't animate these guys quite yet but maybe in the next update we'll be able to so let's go ahead and just die here and watch the magic happen die <coughs> I took an L. Look at that. Boom. I basically I put this in group ID one and I made it toggle off. So you can't see it, it's not activated. Now this same toggle trigger is the same group ID to activate this right here. So you can actually see it, alright? But this trigger will only be spawned if I die, which is on death, alright? On death is the spawn trigger for this toggle trigger right here. This can work with any trigger as well, such as a pulse, a movement anything you want it to be it will activate that group if it's correlating with that same group ID all right so when I died I took an L yeah let's use the follow trigger because I recently been trying to figure this thing out all right so we're just gonna put this all right and group one all right and we're just gonna put this group one to make it move like I don't know how however far I want it to be like 100 all right and we're, it's gonna take a uh, one second and six five nanoseconds all right 
But say I want something. To, say I want something to follow this. All right, which is going to be in group two. All right. Now we're going to go into the follow trigger. All right. Now, <laughs> don't get afraid. This is the one thing. This is my pet peeve. Do not get afraid of these triggers. All right. Now the follow. All right. So let's go ahead and match the group ID, which is this first one right here. Target group ID basically means what group is the object that you want to uh, command. All right. And that for me is group two. All right. And now we want group two to follow group one, which is moving. All right. So let's go ahead and press OK. And look at this. Watch this magic real quick. Boom. All right. It doesn't follow it completely because it does not have the same time as the move trigger. It is a bit less. But if I made it the same as 65, then it would follow it the exact same amount. All right. And now I'll show you what X mod and Y mod does. X mod basically means how much it delays. So let's say I lower this to positive. Look what happens. It doesn't follow as fast. All right. And this it basically just means it's following the X that's already you know there. All right. Y mod follows the same principles. And if this goes negative, it's gonna go to the left. Watch this. The hearts break apart. They broke up. Touch trigger is basically whenever you click. All right. So this is basically. Say you want to turn something on, like a uh, spike. Well, actually, no. We're going to move it, all right? We want it to move down. Negative 10, all right? But we want it to be spawn triggered, all right? We're going to put this in group 2, which will activate the touch trigger, which is by group 1, all right? So, basically, this trigger right here, as stated before, is, tr is activating this trigger for this to move, all right? This moves that only if this allows it to all right that's the pet peeve for spawn triggers in a nutshell all right so the group id is two and we're gonna toggle it on and let's see what happens see when i click it went down so like right now it didn't do a thing but once i clicked it went down this also works if you're holding it all right so let's say i have hold mode on all right Look, I hold it down, it still goes down, all right? But say I wanted this to go up, all right? So this is not spawn triggered, and we're gonna make this go up 100, all right? Watch this, when I hold it, it should be going down negative 10, no matter what. Actually, I went kinda fast, hold on. There we go, see, when I hold, when I held it, it went down. So let's go ahead and put ignore damage on so I don't die, but look at this. This is still going up 100. However, I'm delaying it because I'm holding it. Because every time I hold it, it goes down negative 10 every 0.5 of a 0.5 of a second. But so if I lower this, this should make this go even slower, like that. And when if I just take it to click instead of hold, if I just click, look at this. Okay, well it only works once, but you know. You get the idea. The count trigger, I actually like using insta count trigger. Basically, they work the they basically work the same, except for this one has a little bit extra. So here we go. Alright. Say I have a wall, alright? Like Donald Trump. I have a wall, alright? We have a wall and it's taken down. But only if you give me money. So we're gonna have to put this total trigger in a group, alright? And we're gonna use the insta count trigger so I can count all your money, alright? So, boom, all right, this correlates with group ID 2, all right, now we're going to be utilizing item ID and target ID, all right, and we're going to make it equal, all right, so, <clears throat> five coins, so one, two, three, four, five, I want five dollars each if you want to pass this wall, all right, in order to use these keys efficiently, or these items, these little coins, we have to go to edit special, all right. Now we have pickup item and toggle trigger. You basically know how the toggle trigger works. It works the exact same way. So we're gonna go with pickup item, all right? And the item ID, we're gonna have it as is item ID number one, all right? And subtract count basically means it's going to subtract away from the item ID, which you are about to see. So just know that these coins are an item ID number one, all right? Now we're gonna go back into the toggle, the triggers tab, 
a word you see this little odd looking zero go ahead and put the joker right there all right all right and we're gonna go to edit special all right match the item id right here okay and we're also going to put this in group number three all right stick in with me stick with me we got five coins here the item ID is number one, and we put this little zero thing that turned into a C uh, colon number one, where that's in group number three, all right? Now we're going to go back to the instant count trigger, all right? And we're going to make the item ID number one, and target count three, right? No, 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 incorrect, incorrect. This needs to be five. That needs to be five. This is irrelevant, but I want you to see how many coins you get, all right? And we're going to put that instant count trigger right here, alright? So, basically what this means. If it's smaller, that means the trigger will activate. If it's larger than the original count, which is 5, since I have 5 coins. If it's larger than 5 coins, it'll activate. If it's smaller than 5 coins, it'll activate. Or deactivate, if I wanted to. But I want you to get 5 coins in order to get past this wall. So we're going to make it equal to 5 coins. So if you have an equivalent to 5 coins right here, it's going to activate group ID number 2, which is that Togo trigger, alright? So if you don't got 5 coins, you ain't getting past this wall, alright? Watch this. Watch this. You think I'm playing? Y'all really think I'm playing? Hold on. Let's color these coins real quick, though. This Joker didn't collect 2 coins? You ain't getting back. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. You better pay me my five. Cup trigger is basically uh, the, well, this is basically the quantity of how much you want your uh, item to be. So say I want this coin to be one. So we're going to put it in pickup item number one. And say I want that to equal, instead of it being equal to one, I want that to be two. All right. So every time I pick up a coin, it's worth two. All right. So let's go ahead and put down a couple of coins. And we're also going to put that little zero down as well. Basically, this only works with the very first coin that you pick up. And since all of these are in that same group, it's still going to be counted as one and not, you know, as ten. All right. That's dumb how that, that's so stupid how that works. This is the most complicated trigger you will ever work with. All right. This took me so long to figure out, dude. So let's go ahead and work this out, okay? Okay, so basically we're gonna have to use these little transparent blocks right here, okay? And we're gonna make this one right here. Well, actually, I think we have to supposed to make them both prime, I think. So let's go ahead and make edit object and block collision idea, whatever, whatever. You already know how the layout of a trigger ID works. Basically, the block ID, we're just going to make it one, and we're going to make both of them a dynamic block because that's the only way I know how to make it work. And we're going to make this block ID number two we're also a dynamic block. I only, I do know that one of them has to be a dynamic block in order for this trigger to work. So say I want the background to pulse, all right? So let's go ahead and get a pulse trigger out here, and we're going to have a spawn trigger, and we're going to make it pulse red, all right? And don't worry about exclusive. Exclusive is basically means it's a, a, it's an exclusive trigger only for a certain trigger. It's weird to explain. But let's go ahead and make the background pulse red, all right? But only if it's spawned by the collision trigger, all right? So let's go ahead and put this in group ID number one. And let's go ahead and jump right into the collision trigger, all right? So let's go ahead and move both the triggers over here so we can see the resultant, all right? So let's go ahead and go into the collision trigger right here, edit object. Now, now as you can see, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, all right? Look, we're gonna match the ID of the trigger, with, of the pulse, which is group number two, all right? And we got a block A ID and block B ID. Now look at the info, look at the look, look at this info. Info, Rob Tom, what type of help is that? This is why I'm making this video, son. So our block A ID is group, no, is group ID one, all right? And block B is one. All right. So this is A, right? This is oh wait, wait. This is A right here, and this is B. We gotta get to point A to point B. We gotta get A to point B. All right. In order for this to work. All right. So we're gonna move this and put this in group ID number one. All right. Unless this is in group ID number one. No, you're in group ID number two. Listen to me. All right, so we're going to move this trigger right here. Well, this little block, all right? Supposedly, what will happen 
is that when this trigger collides or touches that trigger it will activate the pulse all right so i gotta make it move one two three four five all right so we're gonna move group id one all right we're gonna make it move over to the right five and look what happens look what happens nothing all right what the heck did i do wrong is it the other way around oh activate group i forgot to activate the group there we go don't forget to activate the group, alright? So we did it right. Basically, make both a dynamic block, make them both dynamic blocks, or make the dynamic block moving towards the non-dynamic block. So that that's really confusing. Alright, so in conclusion, this is A, and we gotta get A to point B, alright? So we want the background to pulse, but only if we get point A to point B. In order to get A to point B, we gotta move it to point B. You know what I mean? In order, and we already put the correlating IDs, all right? And don't forget to activate it, all right? Don't forget to activate it. And trigger on exit basically means when you pass the trigger, all right? It, it'll activate or whatever, you know? So say, now actually, we're, we're, we'll test that later. But this is basically the gist of it right here. Once, a, once that group prime thing makes it to group ID one, it'll work. So let's go ahead and edit it one more time. So let's make this not a dynamic block. And look at that. The dynamic block has to be dynamic. So the block that's moving has to be dynamic or the trigger won't work. All right. So this has to be dynamic. All right. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I did not think I would get through this, but hey, I did. So uh, yeah, those are all the triggers in Geometry Dash. So be sure to leave a like for this tutorial. I'm sorry for being a little bit spastic today. Uh, I guess I was excited to make a tutorial. So uh, if you got any more tutorial ideas, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to leave a like. Comment down below your tutorial idea, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys next time. Later.